Hi everyone, welcome back to my series on the psychology behind the fear of guns. Today we're going to talk about application. Welcome back to the Responsible Patriot page. I'm your host Dustin. Today we're going to talk about application of the principles we've been discussing and how they apply to the real world. We've already discussed how ineffective stereotyping works where you categorize things which are capable of causing you harm based on what's easy to notice in each of those instances. We've talked about what develops a fear from lack of knowledge to that ineffective stereotyping of negative information. It's also important to understand that fear can be rational or irrational. It's rational to fear something which undeniably poses a constant likelihood of harm to us. It is irrational to fear something that does not pose such a risk. For example, if we were to fall down from any height, even if we were just standing on the ground and we merely slipped on some ice, it is likely to injure us or cause us some sort of harm or pain. Therefore, we rationally fear heights because it poses a very real, not imagined, threat to us. Irrational fear is when something does not inherently pose a constant threat yet we fear it constantly anyhow. This is where we begin to get into the fear of guns. A gun is an inanimate object. It does not have a mind of its own. It does not have any intentions, thoughts, or emotions. It is perfectly neutral. It is purely a tool. What makes a tool dangerous to those who aren't in control of it is when the person that is in control of it chooses not to use it safely or has intentions to do harm with it. A lot of Americans are not raised around guns today like they were 50, 40, or even 20 years ago. As technology has advanced and our intellectual capabilities have increased, we've eliminated the obvious day-to-day -day need for guns to some degree. Do not confuse this as saying there is no need for them. What I mean by that is that we no longer have to have them for survival on a day-to-day -day basis. Many people go about their lives without ever being put into a situation in which they could have ever used a firearm. Therefore, it has become less and less important to society to teach firearms basics, and that is no longer a common base of knowledge. Where we once allowed firearms education to be part of school, people have shifted and moved toward a foundation of ignorance. What does ignorance do? As we've already discussed, ignorance is the foundation for developing a fear. By not educating people about firearms and basic safety, the foundation is then set for them to develop an irrational fear. The only information they then have to go on is what is presented to them the most. What is the most presented form of information in our society? Movies, Hollywood, television, news, mass media? This then enables them to stereotype those situations, which they will emotionally empathize with and endure some level of emotional distress. That emotional pain then forces them to seek something about those situations to place blame on so that they, in theory, know what to avoid in the future so that they don't have to repeat that pain. This takes us back to what is the easiest to identify in each of those repetitive and negative situations, the gun. The gun is always present, it's always there, and they always focus on it, rather than investigating and analyzing what other factors were involved in each of those cases. They then ascribe blame for their pain that they felt to that gun because it was present in each of those negative instances. They do this because it's easy. It is our tendency to seek an easy answer, even if it's not the best or most appropriate. They fail to realize that the gun was not capable of performing an act or such an act without the conscious actions of the person controlling it. They are often of the belief that a gun can just miraculously go off at any time because they have no formal experience or education in firearms. A significant portion of our society grows into adulthood without ever being taught any real and factual information about firearms. That ignorance initiates the foundation for irrational fear. The fear is then propagated by constantly available negative information presented by the media repetitively. In psychology, this process is known as fear conditioning. This is where you groom someone to fear something through a basis of no prior knowledge 
and constantly repeat negative information about a topic. There have been a great number of studies conducted where they take small children, for example, and over time teach them that a certain category of rat is dangerous or evil. They often use the color of their fur for the stereotype. Uh, for example, they often will say that only the white rats are dangerous or only the white rats pose a risk to them. The child hears this information and stereotypes white rats as being a threat to them. Yet prior to this, the child had no knowledge of rats beyond the fact that they're an animal. Eventually, the child develops an irrational fear of only white rats because that is what they were taught through sheer ignorance and repetitive negative information. This in combination with their natural tendency to stereotype develops the irrational fear that they will then have. This is no different for guns in American society. We see all of these mass shootings and other acts of violence which get sensationalized in the media. Of course on some level we tend to feel the pain and hardship of those victims and their families through feelings of empathy. That causes us pain which is our instinct to avoid. We then resort to our natural tendency to stereotype by seeking the easiest to identify commonality between all of those situations. We do this in an attempt to identify a simple solution of what to avoid so that we don't have to experience that pain again. Even though the actual cause may not be so easy to identify. This is where if you haven't made the effort to or been put into a position to learn about firearms properly then you are likely to ascribe blame for all of these acts of violence to a gun because it's readily available to blame in each case and it's often easy to notice. In such a case, you are merely falling victim to your own natural psychological tendencies without even knowing it and you're therefore developing an irrational fear of firearms. If all you know about guns is from the television and social media, then it's highly likely that you have developed a subconscious fear of them without even knowing or realizing it. If the mere presence of a gun makes you feel uneasy or nervous, that is a telltale sign that you've developed such a fear. An irrational fear is not always debilitating. The severity of it can vary greatly from person to person depending on each of their circumstances. The most difficult thing for most people is to both realize and admit that they have an irrational fear of guns. If you're one who is willing to step outside of your normal comfort zone and actually learn something, then I would encourage you to seek out those you know and trust who are knowledgeable in firearms or knowledgeable instructors in your area to help you learn and overcome these fears. Also, I'll continue to explore this in my own research and put out more content here which should be of great help and benefit to those viewing. So stay tuned. Until next time, stay safe and Semper Fi.